Aha! What do we got here? Yeah, that's definitely the foundations of the waiting room. Pretty sure about that. Hello, I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at the pretty village of Durley in Hampshire. It's about seven miles to the northeast of Southampton. And we're going to be doing a just under a three mile circular route to the south of the village, taking in some open fields, some wonderful woodland, some terrific scenery, and hopefully, if I can find it, a disused railway. So do join us. As I were filming, middle of October, so autumn certainly with us, but as you can see, I'm squinting in the sunshine. It's going to be a glorious day weather-wise. Are we ready? Let's go. Well, the village of Durley itself is split in two by a road that goes through the middle of it. And we're going to be doing uh, our walk on the southern side of the village. But before we start, I thought I'd pop into the northern side to have a quick look at the church, which is just behind me here. Just turn around and there it is, the, uh, the Holy Cross Church. As mentioned, it's on the northern side of the village. It's a bit isolated and no one really knows why. It might have been the site of a pagan cross. Now this church isn't actually mentioned in, in the Doomsday Book, so it's possible that it was the first church here. The 12th century doorway in the south nave was probably the oldest part, and a fair bit of it is 13th century, and it was restored considerably in 1879. The wooden tower has three bells, and the oldest is dated 1730. And just to the side or south to the church is this magnificent yew tree. Look at the girth of that. I wouldn't be surprised if this is a lot older than the church itself. And you certainly get some terrific views from this elevated position. In fact, I can just about make out in the very, very far distance the uh, the outline of uh, the Hampshire Rose Bowl, or the Aegeus Bowl, home of Hampshire cricket. And then just panning round, just over the other side of that fence is a very pretty golf course. Anyway, I thought I'd just show you that. We're uh, gonna pop back into the car now and drive to the south of the village where I'm gonna start the walk properly. Well, I've parked my car at the Farmer's Home pub, which, as I said, is in the southern side of the, the village. It's just behind me here. A uh, lovely uh, little pub. It dates back to 1747. And I believe it was a slaughterhouse before it was a, a pub. And I was speaking to the landlord a few minutes ago. He's been here for 10 years, and he tells me that Sir John Major once had lunch here. And I was reading in the, the local paper, the Daily Echo, so whether it's true or not, I'm not so sure. But back in 1976, when Southampton Football Club won the FA Cup, they came here shortly afterwards and, and celebrated. Anyway, we're now going to start heading westwards through the village, following a little road. Well, I made my way through the village, passing by some quite exquisite thatched houses as uh, we did so and just where there's a, a little junction that comes into the village we're now going to head off over a footpath and make our way out into the countryside towards the south. Well, I 
I've just come up a little hill, catch my breath back. It was a good opportunity just to uh, stand and admire the view and it is so beautiful up here. I'll just pan round to show you what I'm looking at. So this is looking north and as I said I'm filming uh, middle of October so there's still a little bit of green about although the leaves on the trees are just starting to turn yellow and brown. We'll be seeing a little bit more woodland later on. It's lovely in the sunshine and then just pan air across here. The uh, fields of course harvested some weeks ago. Right we shall kick on. Well, I've just passed a little farm at the top of a hill appropriately called Hill Farm <laughs> and I'm continuing to head south and just behind me here we've got a little private airstrip and I did actually had a little wander to the far end to take some photos from the uh, the other side and there is a little hangar there I think it's um, owned by a company called Aero Antiques and I think they restore classic light aircraft but yeah a good place to have a, a little airstrip on the uh, the top of the hill here all right we better kick on before any aircraft land <laughs> I'm now heading eastwards again following a, a little footpath across a field and I've oh, just passed this lovely house and uh, right at the end of their garden they've got this um, little pergola and a seat and you can see why they've got it here because how about that for a view a little valley with um, some marvellous oak trees and just to the right, our first glimpse of the, the River Hamble. And we'll be having a little closer look at that later on. So we're going to carry on, as I said, heading eastwards, following this footpath across these uh, quite gorgeous green fields. Well, that's where we've just come from. And now we're going to head into a little bit of woodland there's a definite autumnal feel to things as I said before starting to see more golden and brown and yellow colours and the leaves gradually beginning to to fall it's still a lovely time of year though but, uh, grounds still fairly firm not too muddy and the temperature not too cold. Uh, some beautiful views of farmland on my left and then woodland heading down into a valley for the River Hamble on my right. It's beautiful along here, it really is. The River Hamble, which we're going to see shortly, it's not a particularly long river, seven, eight miles, something like that. Well, about 50 yards or so to the south of the river is an old disused railway line and the track crosses it just here 
uh, built in 1863. Um, it wasn't a particularly successful one. It closed to passenger traffic in the 1930s and completely in the 1960s. And it was a, so it was only 3.8 miles long, if that. And where I'm standing now is the site of an old railway crossing. And if I pan round, there's, in fact, I wonder if this little wooden fencing here was part of the, the crossing. It might have been. I say the track crossed the line here. And in fact, if I just step back, yeah, there's an old concrete post there. And look, there's some metal posts there. Now, it had a very interesting history. There was a, a company called, we'll call them BBB. They had a plan in the 1860s to build a railway line that would connect the Midhurst and Petersfield Railway to the main line at Southampton. But unfortunately their plans were objected to by the much bigger London and South Western Railway Company. They were worried about uh, the, uh, the competition on their own lines. However, that company in turn were a bit worried that their main competitor, the, I think it was London and Brighton South Coast Railway, <laughs> they were worried that they might build a line instead. So there was a compromise and the LSW allowed the BBB to have a just a branch line. That's why it's just 3.8 miles long. Well, in 1867, afterwards, the line was sold to the London and South Western Railway Company. Now, I mentioned that I'm standing where there's a, a was a railway crossing. If I just pan round, just to my right, many years ago, there used to be a, a little cottage in that undergrowth. That was built by the company and uh, one of their employees used to live in it rent free on the proviso that his wife would act as the uh, person in charge of the level crossing. But the building was demolished some time ago. But on my left, and this is where the, the track crossed the, uh, the old um, karting track, there used to be a, a halt called Durley Halt. So it was only a single platform really, 120 foot long, eight foot wide, and there was a little wooden waiting room there. But it's all long gone, but having said that, I'm feeling adventurous, so let's go into the undergrowth and see if we can see any evidence of it. Well, I'm making my way through all this thick undergrowth, and there's a, an old railway um, post for the fencing. And, aha, what have we got here? Yeah, that's definitely the foundations of the waiting room, pretty sure about that. Quite a substantial concrete rectangular structure. And it's got some iron bolts on the top and I think the, from memory the waiting room was made of wood so it would have been bolted onto the top. Ah, brilliant. Well, we found something. Uh, let's see if we can see any of the old platform just alongside it. It might be a struggle. It's a bit like looking for a needle in a haystack here. It's so overgrown. Gosh. I'm going to watch where I put my feet. Hopefully Logan is here somewhere. And aha. Uh -huh. Just turning around here. Looks like there's some old bits of concrete bashed up, so I'm guessing that this is all that remains of uh, the platform that was here. But just turning around, you can see how overgrown and full of vegetation the track bed is now, bordered each side by the embankment, which is full of trees as well. Right, let's get back to the path. <laughs> well, that was good fun. I love it when you, you go out and try and find little bits of uh, history and find it buried away. <laughs>
Right, we're going to carry on heading east and just in front of me here is the old Durley Mill and I believe this building was built in the late 18th century but I've seen um, documentation that uh, suggests that there's been a mill here for many centuries. They ceased milling here in the 1960s but I believe it still has the old 1875 water wheel but it's uh, a magnificent building isn't it? Well if you're watching this video and then going to be doing the walk later this is an important uh, part of the route. Just after the mill look out for a barn called Durley Mill Barn and then just opposite there's a little track to Durley Mill Farmhouse and you need to head down there and then as you can see this is where we now pick up the footpath again. It's just that the footpath sign isn't easily seen from the road. <laughs> oh what do you reckon's been down there Lugs? Looks like that could be a badger hole I guess. But we've got this lovely little shaded wooded area and this is now going to take us back to the uh, centre of the village. So we've got open fields on my right and then on the left another one of these valleys with a little tributary of the, um, the River Hamble. Lots of uh, holly amongst other things here. Very pretty. Wow, we're just heading back along a, a road that'll take us back to the, the pub. But um, look at those rather magnificent lions. <laughs> and they've certainly got a terrific view behind that property, haven't they? Quite stunning. Well, we're on the homeward leg now, heading back into the village, coming along this quite uh, enchanting little country lane, lots of uh, houses with their individual characteristics and little unusual features and a prime example if I just turn the camera around in front of me here look at that I don't know what would you call that a little summer house with a little witch's hat on top <laughs> a little bit different well folks we've come to the end of our walk we hope you enjoyed it if you did please give us a thumbs up or a like and do make a comment and as I always say if you haven't already subscribed please do so that way hopefully you'll be able to join us for another walk sometime in the future. We had a super walk today, sun's been out, glorious countryside once again and we're finishing off back at the farmer's home pub for some light refreshment. So while the Covid restrictions still allow this to happen and I'm not too sure how long we'll be able to do this. Until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio. Oh, that's good. <laughs>